Hello everybody, Lego Mega 96 one here, here with another review. Well, I've been getting requests and requests to review horror on the Kirk Ronan branch. Well, which granted, because I'm gonna be because I'm gonna be reviewing it today. This is horror on the Kirk Ronan branch. After my Timothy Re review have gotten popular, people have been commenting me and asking me to review horror on the Kirk Ronan branch. And of course I'm doing it today because I've been occupied and busy over the course of this month. I mean, I've been busy with work and stuff and family related stuff, but don't worry, everyone's fine and no harm. Everything's all peachy key on my end. So, enough out of the way, let's get this review started. And I do know Timothy is in this review because, don't worry, I've come prepared. So, let's get this review started. This is horror on the Kirk Ronan branch. Bring it on. So our movie begins with some screenshots of an old rundown line. Looks like the welcome at to Steve Bannon's house. So we cut to present day Sodor as we see the engines hard at work. But who's narrating this story? It's Kane Fan 701's good friend, Thomas Fan Forever. Now the German of Sodor. A year and a half had passed since the haunting of Timothy's ghost came to an end. But nonetheless, the engines of the Fat Controllers Railway still kept the memory of the legendary story as well as the troubled soul of Timothy deep within their thoughts. One dark, gray, gloomy day, Henry and Lord were double-headed the express from Vickerstown to Napford Station. The two big engines were running ten minutes late due to some troubled passengers who had been deliberately holding up the train for being plain stupid. <laughs> Wait a minute. They were held up ten minutes for people, for those two guys being that stupid? I mean, from what I saw, they looked like they were fighting. I mean, what were they fighting about? Oh, were they fighting over a girl they see when they were fighting over a drink at the pub? Oh, I want you to definitely look into that. So Gordon and Henry continue on further until all of a sudden, Gordon breaks down. Oh, Gordon, what was that? Gordon felt himself going slower and slower. The driver stopped the train. What has happened to me? I feel so weak. Hmm. Do you think it could be your safety valves? Well, I hate to say this, but you burst your safety valve again. Hold it. Oh, oh no, for the no, love no, of no, God. Are you serious? No, not again. Oh, the indignity. Looks like we'll have to call for help. I can't take Gordon to the train by myself. So the crew of both Henry and Gordon's go to the signal box to phone for help until all of a sudden they come across an old line that has not been used in a very long time. Huh? That's strange. What's that line over there? I don't know, Henry. It could have been a line that we once used but we were not aware of it. Did we find Lady's old hideout? Looks like more like an abandoned branch line from my view. If so, who used to run it? And who did it belong to? Well, Y'all don't look at me, I don't know. After Henry and Gordon were rescued by Boko, Henry took a slow train to Ellsbridge Station. As they waited for Thomas, they hear something on the, on the radio on the old branch line they just seen. As of earlier reports of today, the National Trust has bought the Kirk Rubber branch and wishes to restore and open it, for it has been seen in the best interest by those who want to see steam run more than ever. Arrangements have begun in earnest. The railway's leader, Sir Toppenhat, has offered his service to help out with the project. A new service will be drawn up and it will attract more visitors to the island of Sodor. It'll be an exciting new chapter in the various history, for the Kirkwoodburn branch was once a major part of Sodor's early life, and has been abandoned for decades. Now it awaits its return for a new life. Hmm. Wait a minute. 
You mean that's the old line we just seen a couple of scenes ago? Okay, now I'm interested. Is there a history to Kirk Ronan? I, I want to know. Kurt Rowan Branch. So that's what Ian Gordon saw. It sure is, Henry. As a matter of fact, it dates all the way back to when my own family used to work on it. You know about too? Of course I do. Please tell me. Oh, sure thing. I'll tell you all about it. Teach me things. The Kirk Roman branch line was a branch that was operated by three small boxy engines from the Soda and Mayland Railway. They were called Niall, Clive and Roger. However other engines would come and give a helping hand if neither of them were away for repairs. The line started at Calsfund Road where it connected with the main line from Rolls Castle to Kirk Roman. Beyond Kirk Roman, there was a small dock where fishing boats are stationed. Both my grandfather and my father worked as station masters at Rolls Castle. The branch was running well, but as they say, nothing lasts forever. Hard times soon fell, and with the Great Depression coming, the line couldn't cope, and it closed down. You mean, the line closed down due to the Great Depression? Oh man, jobs were lost on that line. Curse you, Great Depression. Curse you. After that, my grandfather and my father retired. They've both sadly passed away since then. Over the years, the small towns that served the Kirk Roman branch have long forgotten about it. But now that it's going to be put back into service, it'll bring back great memories to those who used to work on it. You know what? That's right. Never forget your history. Never. Respect history. Days later, on a slightly foggy morning, Rosie was putting an observation coach to the line. The fat controller was on board. She made it to Kelstrup Road and carefully steamed onto the abandoned line. Oh, hey Rosie, word of advice? Keep an eye out for Darkiplier. He will get you. He will. The Kirk Roman branch line seems to be in great condition. It will need a few things cleared away and repairing, but I think overall, we'll have this ready for the spring season next year. Excuse me for asking, sir, but what about the small dock further down the line? Does that need inspecting? It's still in operation. The Council of Kirk Roman preserved it and has since kept the docks in working order. Its small fleet of fishing boats are currently in use of selling or delivering cargo from the mainland. The Flying Kipper will also have some use there, for that some small deliveries of fish can be made. As for passenger trains for the two stations, that will be no problem. I will soon find the right engines to run it on the line once it's completely repaired. So in other words, the place restored, more jobs means more money. More money. So we cut to James delivering workmen and supplies to a station that needs restoration. James sizzled nicely as he watched them get to work. The night was clear with stars twinkling in the sky. But then, the red engine and everyone else suddenly felt a drop in temperature that went cold. Huh? What in the world is going on? What's with this cold feeling? Okay, who left the AC on? Come on, put your hands up. Who did it? No one? Hold up, no free lunch breaks. As he saw the workman commencing work on the station, James thought he saw a man 
one he did not recognize. He was at the edge of the station, as if he was observing the work in progress. The man walked away, and then around the brake van. Out of his sight, he waited to see him come from the other side, but he didn't. What the? Where? Where's he gone? Then there came the sound of another engine's puffing. James almost gasped when a shadowy figure of a tank engine rolled past him before it suddenly vanished. What in the name of Satan did we just see? Never mind that! Get me out of here! So James runs to the next station and tells the station master what has transpired. And the next morning he tells it to Emily, who is still in disbelief for what he had what James had just said. That's some story, James. Are you sure your mind wasn't playing a trick on you? I'm not kidding! I saw what I saw. It scared me out. That unknown tank engine. It looked and shape. It looked like. Who do you think it was? Oh, I don't know. Timothy? I only saw it for a short moment, but then it vanished. I really don't hope not to see him again like I did in the deleted scene of Ghost Train Yonto's story of Timothy. You what? Never mind. So work continues on. Since James chickened out and not do Kirk Ronan Branch anymore, Thomas decided to help out Emily and Rosie until work on Kirk Ronan Station was completed. But to be fair though, I believe James and I know what he has seen. I mean, I'd be scared too if I decided... I mean... I'd be scared too if I saw something like that. Like, say I was at Gettysburg. If I saw something like a Civil War soldier, not a reenactor, but a real one, I'm headed for the hills. I would do that. There's been a change of plan. Emily, you'll be needed to take the Flying Kipper to Tidmouth Harbor, where Henry is due to take it to the mainlands. Edward will take the engineering train, and Rosie and Thomas will have to stay here and take turns in doing night shunting at the docks. So Emily leaves, taking the flying Kipper to Tethmouth Harbor, so Henry can take it, while Thomas and Rosie shun cars at Kirk Ronan Harbor. Rosie went first, leaving Thomas to rest in the shed, and his crew could get some rest too. After shunting some empty vans, it was time for her to switch with Thomas. But before she could, a cold drop in temperature was felt, and a layer of fog came down. The driver and fireman could hardly see, and decided not to take any risks, and kept Rosie where she was. Oh my goodness! I don't like this at all! Does that mean it's too late to do this? Run, bitch! Run! Thank you, Shorty. You should never have come here. Who's there? You dare come to this place? Now you will be punished for your sins. Rosie became frightened. Then she nearly screamed and hover when she saw an unknown figure walking past her. From where he was going, he was heading towards the shed where Thomas was sleeping in. Huh? Who are you? You! You are on my railway. You and your friends have invaded my place of rest, disturbing it. Since when is Kirk running your railway? The question is, who is this guy? And what's his story? I mean, granted, he's the old controller, but what's his real name? No, someone should definitely look into that. Don't you even know who I am? No, but pretty much I'm gonna call you the Donald Trump of Sodor. I was once the controller of this railway. Oh. This was my own. Until I was forced to leave and go to Sodor, where I took over. 
I had to deal with it, and most of the engines were old and out of shape. Even he, who I never got along with, he who was big for his own wheel and never showed me respect, and ended being treated like the way he was. I didn't care for him, and wanted him out of my sight, and I would have done by scrapping him. So you're the jerk responsible, huh? Take it back. You are the Donald Trump of Sodor. Shame on you, my good sir. Shame on you, sir. But that never came to me, for he killed me and many other lives. <laughs> you know what? That is just a load of... Hang on. You're... You're not saying... You're the... It can't be! So the disrespectful coward shows himself at last! Thunder and Jesus, don't tell me! It's... <laughs> it's... It's him! you on the viaduct and I saw you fall. This is impossible. So to recap <laughs> Now as I stated in my last review Timothy is still around, and he won't stop until Thomas is his alone. That's why he won't leave. You can't kill what is already dead. I may be dead, but I still keep coming back. You and your friends were wrong about me. I still haunt Soto, and no matter what you do, I continue to strike when and where you least expect. Finally, after all these decades, we meet again. Timothy, or should I say, number zero? Never call me by my number! Never call Timothy by his number. I'm taking notes on this. So I as we dive deeper it. into this, but we actually get to hear from the old controller on how he felt you. on Timothy. You seemed like a useful tank engine. Until I found out you were only a prototype of a class I knew nothing about. And always gave me a hard time. You remember, don't you? You remember when we first met on this railway? This was once our own. I was born, raised, and grew up here. When I had this job to run the line, I was going to be among the richest ever until you came along. You costed me everything, and I was forced to step down as controller of the Kirk Ronin branch. I found work elsewhere and took the role of being in charge of Sodor, while you were sold to the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway. But after they gave you away, you came to Sodor, and once again, we met, and the troubles started once more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Timothy, what is your response on this, my good sir? I mean, Engine. I never caused any problems. You were the problem. You got people who didn't know how to look after steam engines the right way, and made us all look like a joke. You never really knew how to run a railway, and I cared about making money! Your fate was sealed, 
when you were going to scrap me for no reason. I may have been old because I was used up more often, and due to the fact that I was only a prototype for the E2 class. Your bad treatment on me and the other engines pushed me over, and that's why I took my revenge on killing you. But even at death, you're still on it with me. So, if Timothy is not the villain, then... Who is the villain? That's a big question. And the million dollar one of that. So I want you to look into this and see who is the bigger villain? Timothy or the Donald Trump of Sodor? I'm still saying the old controller. Hands down. You are nothing but a pathetic excuse for a human being! And your pathetic excuse for a steam engine! I should have scrapped you way before that! Leave. You were a terrible controller with no heart or compassion to show any respect to me or the other engines. You wasted most of our lives away, and didn't seem bothered about that. You only cared about your fortune, your money, and yourself. The greediness of all humans. Shame on you, sir! Shame on you! Over a hundred years, it comes to an end. Leave now, or never come back! I won't let you! Well, that was... completely out of nowhere. Now, ladies and gents, that was a jump scare. I mean, just imagine Timothy doing that at the Henry Fleming. In fact, I presented this to NTC once. He got scared by this. <laughs> Lastly, I got a story for you. When I was up late Wednesday night, when I was listening to this, I was working on a fan fiction. When I heard Timothy, Timothy say, leave now and never come back, I decided to... So have a look at this, and ladies and gents, this was my reaction. <laughs> and that is literally what happened. And word of advice, do not watch this in the dark with the lights out. If you do, you'll have night terrors on that. And that's the whole truth. So after recovering from that unexpected eyes. jump scare, Thomas see, opened his eyes to see there. Timothy is still there, but the old controller chickened out. I guess one demonic scare can send a guy running. I... I don't understand. How could this happen? All this time, you were after me, wanting me gone, but now you have come back and... Thomas, there's more to my story than you think. Everything that has been told and revealed is only part of something much bigger. Wait a second, there's more? You mean to say there's still more to Timothy's story? Okay, now I'm getting interested. Proceed, monsieur. When you first started out in your young life, we used to live together at this railway. The Kirk Roman branch used to be my home, and I enjoyed it here. But as I once told you, the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway owned me. But they decided to keep me working here until I was retired near the end of 1913. But that didn't last long. And the rest, you already know. God, I feel sorry for you, buddy. But I'm here for you every step of the way. Respect. Everyone knows about my demise, but they'll never be able to understand it. 
However, they fail to know another thing. And that is the story of our past, Thomas. The story of you and I. For what I've seen, you and your friends are restoring this line to what it once was. I would not allow you to do that. But since that old controller, that no good heartless human is gone, I will let this continue. But if you get to run it, I will give you your last rights. And then the island of Sodor will no longer have Number one, I saw it all, Rosie. It was him, my brother, Timothy, and that man was the former controller who once ran this railway. I was shocked. We all were, my friend. We all were. But it turns out I didn't defeat the ghost train after all. He's still here and still coming for me. But for some strange reason, he let me go. But frettingly said, that if I was to run this line, when it's finished being restored, he will take me down. What? But he's... I know, I know. But I won't let it happen. The thing between me and my brother is not over. But somewhere, sometime, someday, it will end. And hopefully, he'll let go and move on this time. You do that, Thomas. You got America on your side. The work does continue for several more months until finally work on the Kirk Ronan branch was completed. On the opening day, Sir Topham had given speech to those who worked on it and those who had worked on it years ago. Ladies, gentlemen, and engines, it is with great pride and joy that I thank you all for coming on this very special day that marks the beginning of a new chapter in the history of the Northwestern Railway on the island of Sodor. For everyone that was involved in this project in restoring the Kirk Roman branch to its former glory, they are to be congratulated for they put their hard work with every ounce of dedication, sweat and blood to complete it on time to make it to this opening date. I would also like to thank the people, the public and customers who helped raise the money to support the project as well as the engines on Sodor who took their part in the restoration. Today is a day that you will take a step back in time, at a time when this small branch line was once among many of the early railways that helped build this railway into what it is today. And we dedicate it to those who once worked on it years ago before our time. Now, I, Sir Top and Hat, declare the Kirk Roman branch that runs from Calsford Road to Kirk Roman officially open. Three months later, after Kirk Ronan Branch's successful reopening, Thomas traveled to Kirk Ronan with empty fish fans to be loaded with fish for Henry's flying kipper. While the blue tank engine enjoyed his long drink, he could sense the presence of Timothy, even thought he couldn't see him. Wherever you are, hear this. No matter how you will try and succeed in your quest to take me down, this railway will always have its number one engine. 
you'll never be able to. Just like the first time. Timothy, if you can hear this, I know a part of your inner demons has left, and you're slowly but surely giving up all your hatred from your past. What I saw between you and the ghost of the old controller was one of them. You may not believe it, but somewhere in time, or somewhere down the line, you will let go, and finally be able to rest in peace with the rest of my brothers and sisters. Thomas leaves Kirk running with them with loaded fish wagons, and we get one more scene from Timothy before the movie ends. But there is none. It's already too late for me. Forgive me. But there is no peace, little brother. So that was Horror on the Kirk Ronan Branch. One of my thoughts? Well, here are my thoughts. It's pretty interesting. Pretty cool. Now, I have read Kane Fan 701's fan fiction on DeviantArt, and I highly, highly recommend you read it. It is pretty cool, though. Plus, it is a good story for Halloween, though. And I, to me, it is really cool. So, Kane Fan, you did an awesome job, my friend. You deserve a big thumbs up for it. And a big shout out to those who helped King Fan along the way. And those who played the characters for him in his fan fiction movie. And those who supported him along the way. So for those out there who did help King Fan, you guys deserved a big thumbs up. A thumbs up to the German of Sodor. A big thumbs up to King Fan 701. And a shout out to those who played the characters for him in his fan fiction. And I highly recommend you read the fan fiction and watch the movie on Halloween. They are pretty cool. Oh, and watch King, King Fan 701's first film, Ghost Train the Untold Story of Timothy for Halloween. It is pretty cool. Well, that's it for this review. If you like what you see, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, this is LegoMaker961 signing off. And happy Halloween.